So I've actually been streaming at night in Discord, <laughs> like really, really late at night, right? To, uh, so that I can actually uh, show some plays that I'm looking at, right? So last night, actually, CFRX came up and, uh, uh, you know, it was a play actually that I, that I kind of just uh, talked about real late and it actually met the targets that we were looking for but let's go over those conditions now because there may be a bigger opportunity than we think uh well yeah let's just go ahead and start now what is up you guys thank you so much for stopping by once again this is arca coming at you with a cfrx technicals raw price action and statistical threat of analysis on this happy friday before we get started please make sure to subscribe to the channel like the video and share the video with a friend so that you and them could consider joining our trading community and discord called arca bulls with that said let's dive right into the charts okay you guys so please please uh Pay attention on this one because it is kind of a complex, right? So what we're looking at here, first of all, hold on, let me just get the Gaussian channel out. Uh, what we're looking at here is your typical broadening descending wedge, right? Very typical for a for a, you know for this formation to form in a in a bear market cycle, right? So uh, the breakout actually happened in the very curious place. What I mean by place is actually by the iteration. So uh, breakout number five usually shows us that. This would be one of the true breakouts, right? Four or number five, four being the higher likelihood, right? So in this case, there, there you know, whatever reason, X and Y reason, we didn't move onwards and upwards from that test number four, but we came back on test number five, validated that support, which was actually looked at yesterday. Uh, and man, I actually even, I actually even uh, measured the potential, the potential resistances or support. It's funny that it came right at it, right? So uh, the reason we came back down. Uh, other than the fact, you know, other than fundamental factors or whatever else, but we're looking at charts here. We're looking at data and statistics here. So, uh, based on that notion, right, we actually came back to the area of what would be considered now a newly converted support, right? It, it used to be a resistance, right? So now that we broke above it, we came back and tested it as a viable area of support. So that support line from the broadening descending wedge just so happens to be lined up perfectly with the one spot six one eight. Uh, if you don't understand by what I mean, it's 1.618 Fibonacci ratio, okay, the, from the Fibonacci uh, retracement sequence, right? So this is, this is just a tool that we use here uh, in the trade, you know, to, to determine potential targets. So this is a, a leading indicator. So something that can give us a future projection based on current price action or previous price action, right? So, yeah, uh, 165 seemed to be a pretty healthy area for a pullback, right? This is uh, the price action from today is uh, showing with these two candles. You can actually see the date right down here, right? So please notice that this candle here is the uh, 28th, Friday, April, right? And this is right here, the 28th, Friday, April. And then this one here is the 27th, right? So, uh, yeah, I was I was looking at the potential uh, target down here. Uh, I, I personally wanted to wanted to see if it can wick all the way down to 157 to get long on this ticker right as sometimes that tends to happen but as you can see here the ticker i'm sorry the the, the candle actually went down one cent below the one spot 618 and the way you can tell is actually right by up here look at the uh letter l right i know it's very small but when you hover over the candle you'll see that the l lands at 164 okay so very likely the, the trade usually likes to take the uh, the price to the 618 ratio, right? So, uh, yeah, we, we retraced from that, and my projection was to come up to about $2.12, and it actually made a top side of about $2 and uh, on, on the H here for high, right? It made $2.15. Now, that target is not random. The, the target of $2.15 .15 is definitely not random. So let's go ahead and pull up the Gaussian channel here, and uh, please notice that, the Gaussian channel is another reason I was able to determine that we would be facing a support touch from down at this area. Why? Because the newly converted resistance from the broadening descending wedge into support lands right at that one spot 618 and also the Gaussian channel bottom. My projection to bounce from this upside to the 215 level or 212 level, which which was at, you know, uh, yesterday, and I think it was particular to the eight. Uh, to the 8 hour or to the 12 hour. I forgot what it was, but 212 was my target essentially, right? To come just short of the overall mean band. Uh, as you can see here, we actually rejected right from that Gaussian channel resistance and came back down and then pumped to the upside just a little bit. The good thing is, is that uh, it validated the support right from the from the broadening descending channel now if you are familiar with the trading rules or the playbook rules as to how to trade a broadening descending wedge then you know that the take profit for this formation now opposed to how it was traded 
about a year ago, um, is located at the genesis of the formation itself. So $6.76 would be that topside target for this uh, formation. I'm not saying that we're going there. What I am saying is that it's typical to trade it in that manner. Okay, so in order for us to validate a potential thesis like that, then we would have to continue uh, watching the chart. As you can see here, the space between uh, this area here and this area here is about 11 days and 12 hours, right? So you can only see that this would take weeks to kind of complete, right? So um, yeah, I'm just I'm just telling you how it can be traded. Anything can happen within, uh, you know, today and that time frame all the way over there. But the possibility is there and I must uh, present it, right? So now, uh, let me go ahead and move on to the next chart because the next chart would be uh, the statistical side. And I actually uh, will give you the context or, or the criteria behind this. Anytime that volatility has expanded into the 90 percentile or 90 percent and started a contraction phase paired with uh, momentum with an upside pivot, I have taken note of every single iteration's duration, the upside thrust, and also the amount uh, the amount of times that the volatility profile the, the volatility pro wow the volatility profile <laughs> has guessed the upside correctly versus incorrectly and i also went ahead to calculate the the standard deviation and the first standard deviation upper bound and lower bound okay based on math right if you are uh, if you are math savvy then you will understand exactly what i mean this is statistics right so uh, let me just go ahead and show you that i did kind of do my homework i did put in fact put in the work myself right so this is a a, a hand back test right so i have taken note of all of those iterations where that criteria has met i can take you literally anywhere anywhere in this chart and just point at a random or at a, at a random iteration so you can see that I'm not, uh, you know, making some stuff up. How about this one right here, right? So let's just go ahead and put a square around that one and uh, just make sure that we don't lose our position, right? And zoom in to the price action, right? So just like this right here. Okay. So let's go ahead and just go over that condition real fast so you understand exactly what I'm doing, right? So this is actually something that I am teaching my master's students uh, for the ARC Master's Trading course. So if you are actually interested in that, tomorrow's the official first day of starting the building of uh, the system building. Okay, you guys, so it, it's, uh, it's designed so that you can learn from the very, very basics of trading from candles, from what they are to trading platforms and all that good stuff, all the way up to advanced topics and mathematical concepts. Okay, so if you are interested, find that uh, Gmail in the description below as I do have about a seat available <coughs> left from the 30 that I actually offered. The track one students are already almost, uh, they're, at, they're at their seventh week coming up this Sunday. And uh, track two students are coming up to their second week and official start of the system building. Okay, you guys, so let's go ahead and continue on here. So what I ended up doing in this iteration here, since it is green, you can see that we did have a slight upside pivot here, just very slight. And I took note, of course, like I said, the iteration's duration, right? So meaning that it's uh, two bars long slash one day on the eight hour chart. And it, it the measurement is taken from the opening of the candle to the top side of the candle, swing high to swing low, opening to uh, opening, uh, opening basis to wick high. Okay, I understand there's no wick here, but I'm talking about range high. Okay, so in this case, uh, yeah, let, let's see. Let's just kind of highlight this right here in 478, 79. Some of these are going to be just slightly, slightly off. Right, you can see right here in the opening 478, 40. Right, and we have the top side of this uh, being the H. So H is at 62048 uh, opposed to uh, 62034. So just my, you know, just a couple cents off. But that's essentially how I'm measuring every single iteration throughout this. And I was actually doing it live in the uh, in the Discord stream last night. I, w I wasn't really talking a lot. I was just kind of allowing people to see me back test something, right? So, and this just so happened to be what was on my radar, right? So it was a very short term trade, and it played out just the way we were talking about. So. Now, going back to the statistics, anytime that that condition has happened, uh, and, you know, we have we have a total amount of correct iterations versus incorrect. So we have total 46 throughout the entire trading history of the CFRX asset on the eight hour chart, giving us 33 
correct iterations out of those 46. And that gives us an average upside accuracy of 71 spot 74 percent with an average upside thrust of 28 spot 62 percent with a standard deviation of 42 spot 40. OK, now regarding the lower end or the lower bound and the upper bound of the first standard deviation is the bell curve. I'm sure that a lot of you are familiar with what I'm about to show you, right? So, uh, but just to continue on giving you more and more context here for, for, for the accuracy, right? So let me, yeah, let me just go ahead and do this, right? So this would be in essence that bell curve that we're looking at, right? And then like this, that came out way more perfect than I thought, right? So, <laughs> I did. Oh, my goodness. All right. So now what we do is actually draw a line, right? So a line in the middle of this of this bell, right? So this actually gives you uh, between, the, well, two, uh, three lines total, right? So something along the lines of like this here and maybe like here, right? So that gives you 68% of the results being the standard deviation, which is calculated from the mean. And uh, from the mean, each individual, each individual iteration would have to be squared. To, to, it's just a huge, it's a huge math problem. I'm not about to uh, <laughs> explain all that, okay? So yeah, so the 68% of the results ends up being 42 spot 40% with the lower end. Actually, let's go ahead and write this down, right? So that you can actually get the entire, idea behind this so uh we have four uh yeah 42 spot 40 uh percent being the standard deviation the lower end of the first standard deviation would be 1378 i'll explain this to you in just a bit okay but this is essentially how you know a lot of institutions trade market makers use this all kinds of people use this so um but i'm just ex i'm just here to expose to you some other ways that you can be um, you know, looking at the markets. So the upper end of the first standard deviation would be 71 spot 02 uh, percent, right? So now we have now we have the mean 28 spot 62 percent with an average upside accuracy, meaning that anytime that that condition from volatility versus momentum profile meet, we have a 71.74 percent chance that whatever the mean is or this standard deviation calculation is, that it would happen. Right, so 71% chances is not bad, right? So this is on the eight-hour chart in particular to an upside, okay? So involving uh, stochastic momentum versus volatility. Okay, so now, uh, and now you can look at the first standard deviation just like you do the mean as well. So 71% chances that when this criteria meets, we can make a minimum move of 13 spots, 78%. Uh, with an upper bound, meaning meaning a 71 spot 0.2% would be also in the cards here. If we were to meet this condition, then we have the data for the for the uh, uh, targets to kind of look for, right? So now, when did the move fired uh, fire? When did the signal fire? So that was actually. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. So anytime that we're talking about this, right? Anytime that we started contracting, uh, and paired with uh, stochastic momentum to the upside, right? So I, I would say that we started contracting about here, right? When we, when we pretty much when we touched that 90% coming down. So that's the contraction phase going down. Volatility is direction neutral. Okay, so if that were the case, then we're looking at then we're looking at this candle being the beginning of it, right? So the opening of this candle, since I am measuring these iterations from opening to range high, that you can see the opening from this candle being on the O right there that the opening is $1.76. So we make our mark at $1.76, right, from this uh, measurement tool. And we measure all the way to the top. Uh, let's see, what was the what was the standard move? So we have 67% uh, to the upside. 67.09% to the upside is what we ended up making, right, right up to this point here. So... If we look at now the mean, the mean was 28 spot 62 percent, right? So let's go ahead and just look at what that 28 spot 62 percent is. So right down here, around here, right? It looks like we even closed. <laughs> we closed that green massive candle there right at about 28, uh, uh, right at about 28 percent, 
Right. So now making the move to the upper side, that this is the this is the the magic behind having statistics on your end, right? That you're getting an upper bound of 71 spot 02 percent to the upside based on a first standard deviation. Right. So now the move that we actually made from the opening of the candle, which was the firing of the signal, oh, sorry, right here, to that top side was a total of 67 spot 09 percent, which is pretty freaking close, right? Not bad at all. So that that move is it has been essentially completed, right? So now we have to look at we have to look at the potentials uh, regarding psychology, regarding current momentum. But usually, when these moves play out, that would be the signal matured. Okay, so yes, I did this entire back test just to show you how I do it, right? So let's go ahead and now look at the last part of the analysis, which is the RSI. Okay, so we can see in the immediate short term time frame, I'm talking about 15 minute. Uh, we're looking at an upside to that SMA 14 resistance coming up, meaning that we're likely to find a downside soon, right? From a, from a very, very short term upside rejection soon. What validates that is the two hour. We're facing resistance from that 14 day simple moving average represented by that pink line. The RSI signals your purple line, right? We're getting that resistance. We're coming back down. Please notice here that the six hour and the 12 hour are showing potential supports coming up from the 14 day simple moving averages, right? And then as you move into the daily and even look into the buy daily, then your momentum is actually suggesting upside. You have upside pivots on both the RSI signal and the moving averages, right? So this is this is very cool. This is uh, and and now going up to you know uh, up to the real higher term timeframes like a five like a five day. It's kind of waiting for the influence from the shorter timeframes to kind of topple in or bleed into here. Right. So but as far as the three day iteration, we have upside. OK, so meaning that now we can go back to the charts and try to see what what type of move to the downside could we face. Right. So if we looked at this this uh, target at the one spot six one eight and now that our next 12 hour iteration would be down here. So then we're starting to get closer to that two fib at 157, right? So if we need to get a little closer, then we can take that fib and from the from the last 12 hour candle, we can take an inverse fib and see what that downside could be. Because first we would make a quick upside, right? So let's just let me even see if we have any uh, moving averages that are ra that, that are kind of ready for us to face some resistance. Well, nothing pertinent, right? So the the more likely resistance that we would face is the uh, the top side of these candles here. I'm talking about the body and the wick here. So that would be a rejection at about 201 coming up, uh, you know, the, the space between 201 to about, I would say, 209, and then retrace back to maybe find support from the SMA 10 and the SMA 50, okay? But it's, again, at 165 where the 1 spot 618 is located. Now, if we want to get a little more surgical, then we take into account just the retracement from this candle here. As this fib still has to do with the with what people are looking at from the previous day, okay. So now let's go ahead and uh, kind of match the relevance between this support line here to the new fib. And if you can look at horizontally, right, look at where it's landing. This is the twelve-hour candle where it would sit next. That's why you get these notches. It goes click, 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 right. So right down here. Look ver look uh, look horizontally to the right. You can see the two spot six one eight at one sixty two. That's my target. I'm looking at one sixty two. All right, so one sixty two would essentially be that uh, bottom support before potentially finding a continuation to the upside. Here we're still in the validation process of this uh, broadening descending wedge. Okay, you guys. So that's uh, gonna do it for me. Um, I mean, the resistance. If if you're curious about a resistance, then yeah, the more obvious target would actually be again around two fifteen. Okay, you guys, uh, but yeah, if uh, you have any questions or concerns, reach out to me on Twitter, on Discord. I'm available everywhere, okay, you guys? But uh, And pl please remember, first and foremost, that I am not a financial advisor. Take whatever I do show and iterate within these videos as just a form of entertainment as I cannot suggest for you to buy or sell any assets whatsoever. I need you to do your own DD. Everything will be cool, 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 okay, you guys? But with that said, I wish you well a very good weekend, and I will catch you at the bell on Monday. Adios.